Hey everyone, John Reed here from Learn to Stargaze, an author of 50 Things to See with a Telescope and 50 Things to See on the Moon. I'd like to share with you some of the best stargazing targets in the northern sky. And these targets are in my sky all night and all year long. Because as the Earth turns, these objects appear to circle around and around the North Star. More specifically, the North Celestial Pole. We call these objects circumpolar. Now I'm here in Nova Scotia, Canada at about 45 degrees north latitude. That means there is a circle in my sky about 45 degrees from the North Star, where the stars never sink below the horizon. Now these are the stars that are circumpolar for me. If you live down in Florida at say 25 degrees north latitude, then only 25 degrees of sky around the North Star will be circumpolar for you. Of course, we can't always see our local horizon because it's covered by trees and buildings. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to subtract about 10 degrees and look at targets in about a 35 degree radius around the North Star. Again, that's so I won't lose my target behind a tree. Okay, the first thing we need to do is look at the prominent constellations and star patterns that we call asterisms that are in this part of the sky. The two most famous patterns are an asterism called the Big Dipper and a constellation called Cassiopeia. We'll use these two constellations to guide us to the telescope targets in this part of the sky. Now let's move over to the telescope and see what we can see. Now this telescope is connected to a camera and the telescope and the camera are connected to my iPhone. So I'm going to show you exactly what I see through this telescope via the iPhone and the camera. Let's check it out. Now Capella is the top star in what you might call the winter hexagon. The winter hexagon contains Capella, Pollux, Procyon, Cirrus, Rigel, Aldebaran, and then you get back to Capella. So here we have Capella, and I'm gonna use Capella to focus the telescope. So we focus the telescope by putting a little mask over the main lens of the telescope and then turning the focus knob until these three diffraction spikes are perfectly symmetrical with each other. Oop, too far the other way. There we go, we've got the telescope in perfect focus. Now let's start with one of my favorite targets. This is NGC 457. Now it's an open star cluster. So open star clusters are groups of young stars that were all born around the same time. And the galaxy's gravity hasn't taken enough time to spread them out around the galaxy and away from each other. So there's lots of open clusters in this part of the sky and they're really beautiful. So we'll see a couple of those tonight, but this is my favorite. NGC 457 is found here in the constellation Cassiopeia. Now this cluster also goes by the name the E.T. cluster from the Steven Spielberg movie. You can see his eyes and arms reaching out here. And it also goes by the name the Owl cluster. So you might hear that as well. Now we're gonna move counterclockwise around the sky to a box of stars in the constellation Cepheus. This target is called the Swimming Alligator Cluster. This one is just like the Dragonfly, except that it's a little bit smaller through the eyepiece. But it's a fun one. As you look at it, the first thing you'll see are these two bright stars like alligator eyes poking up out of the water. A little snout and a tail is also visible. Now we've moved clockwise around the North Star to a constellation called Camilla Pardalis. This constellation contains one of the most popular binocular targets in the sky, called Campbell's Cascade. It's a beautiful line of colorful stars that stretch across your field of view. Now at one end of Campbell's Cascade is a bonus target, like a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. We call this the Jolly Roger Cluster, or NGC 1502. Here on the right of the screen, you can see some of the stars in Campbell's Cascade, and in the center here, we have that cluster. Switch over to focus view. I'm gonna take one, one second exposures here. Get these stars in frame. Oh, wrong way. All right, now that we've got Kemble's Cascade framed in the shot, 
I'm going to take a 30 second exposure and see if we can bring out some of those stars. So as I hope you'll see, this line of stars is really quite beautiful. Through binoculars or a small telescope, you'll actually see different colors of stars. There'll be blue stars, white stars, and red stars. Beautiful. It actually goes even further than my field of view right here. All right, on to the next target. All right, now we're gonna jump to the other side of the North Star and using the Big Dipper as a reference, we're gonna find some galaxies. Now the easiest way to find these two galaxies is to use the Big Dipper. Follow these two stars here in a straight line equal to the distance between them. Most telescopes can see both of these objects in the same field of view without too much difficulty. So I'm gonna tell the telescope to go to the galaxy M81. So here we've got M81 in the screen. Now let's try to get M81 and M82 in the screen at the same time. Go over here to focus. Take one second exposures. Oh, there it is at the bottom. All right, now using my focusing tool, I've got the two galaxies framed up in the same field of view at the same time. Now I'm gonna take a long exposure of 30 seconds and see if we can really get a good look at these two galaxies. Cue a time lapse. So although these two targets look great in small telescopes in the same field of view, if you've got a really big telescope, these galaxies look pretty good on their own. Ooh, look at this detail. So this right here is the Cigar Galaxy, and it goes by the designation M82. Over here, we have Bode's Galaxy, and it goes by the designation M81. And here we've got them beautifully framed up in the same field of view. Bode's Galaxy is a spiral galaxy, and the Cigar Galaxy is an irregular type galaxy. We can actually get a little bit more detail if I click the histogram button, zoom in, and really increase the brightness, narrow in on that data. Look at that. Not bad for 30 seconds. I'm gonna save that. There we go, save. All right, now let's go over to Mizar one of the most famous double stars. And this double star is located in the asteroids on the Big Dipper. And it is the middle star in the handle. Now you can see the stars Mizar and its partner Alcor, even without a telescope. Um, but you'll notice if you look close at the star Mizar, it's actually a double star. So let's wait for the telescope to center in on Mizar and Alcor. And then I'll show you that little, little double star. Okay, so here we have on the left, we have Mizar, and on the right, we have Alcor. And that star on the left, Mizar, you can see that it's actually two stars, but our exposure time was actually a little bit long, and it looks like those two stars are smushed together into one star. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a much shorter exposure, maybe 0.1 seconds, and let's see if we can split those two stars apart. There we go, all right. So a 0.1 second exposure, and you can clearly see that Mizar is two stars. And again, there's Alcor there. And these are the middle stars in the arm of the Big Dipper. Well, I hope you enjoyed that quick tour of the Northern Hemisphere's circumpolar sky. If you'd love to learn more, check out my website, learntostargaze.com, or follow me on YouTube at learntostargaze.